Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my 2020 Lexus NX300T. We just got back from Park Place Lexus where we purchased the car. And I just want to give you a little bit of a, uh, I guess a disclaimer right up front. I'm kind of a Lexus bigot. I've owned, I don't even know how many Lexuses, but every car I've owned since 1994 has been a Lexus and I've purchased every one of them from the same dealership, from Park Place Lexus, and believe it or not, from the same salesperson. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about the 2020 and also let you know that we just traded in yesterday uh, our 2017 NX200T for this NX300T. Now, before we had the 200T, we had a series, a series of ES3 300s, ES350s, and even one RX330. And uh, so this is a lot smaller car than what we're used to. Uh, it's kind of a compact SUV. So let me just, I'm gonna walk a little bit around the car and show you a little bit of everything. The kind of the front grille, not much has changed since 2017. I'll try to go through some of the changes that I've noticed since 2017. You've got the LED daytime running lights, which I think are larger on this car than they were on the 2017 LED headlights. I really like the way they, they kind of redesigned the grill a little bit. Before, it was just kind of these flat waterfall look. Now they've added some little bit of a texture to it. And it's kind of a, I don't know, kind of a dark gray material. Now, I want to also point out this is the base model in NX. It is not an F-Sport. And one of the reasons I'm doing this review is because everything I found on YouTube was a review of the F-Sport. It was not the base model. So I want to talk to you today about the base model NX, which is what we have. So this grill kind of goes all the way down. It's kind of like a big cow scoop grill. You got the massive Lexus logo here in the center. I've got a little bit of a chrome trim all the way around this grill, which is kind of nice. Same hood we had in 2017. It's got a little bit of a sculpture to it. Looks nice. The semi-hidden windshield wipers, I wouldn't say they're hidden, but they're semi-hidden. And then over here, you've got the black plastic uh, on the wheel wells, which I'm not really crazy about. I, I, I would rather it be painted. I think it, it makes it look a little cheap, but I do love these 17 inch wheels. And I really like the, the wheels that came with this car compared to my 2017. I just think these are much li uh, nicer looking wheels. Uh, this particular car came with Dunlop tires. Um, haven't had Dunlops in a while on a car, but we'll see. Move around here to the uh, rear view mirrors. They've got little LED indicators on the side. And these are power uh, rear view mirrors and they're also auto dimming rear view mirrors. Uh, you come along the door line, it's got this kind of distinctive Lexus sculpted look, you know, where you got the kind of the slant here and then straight down. It does not come with any kind of door side molding protection. There's a little bit of black trim or dark gray trim down at the very bottom which I think kind of sets it apart, makes it look nice. Now you do have a little chrome trim here. Around the windows, you've got this gloss plastic uh, here uh, on the uh, B pillar, and then you've got all this chrome around here. So that, that looks nice. I wish there was some chrome in the back, but there's not. There was on the 2017, but not on the uh, 2020, at least not on the base model. Uh, you can see the, the rear tailgate of the vehicle. We've got a rear windshield wiper. It does have a defrosted uh, rear window, of course. And you've got a little bit of Lexus uh, badging on here, kind of a, I guess, a little prote uh, protective strip where if you put your foot up there or something, it won't do too much damage. You don't want to scratch up the bumper. Um, down below, you've got this kind of flat black plastic uh, bumper in the rear. Uh, you do have a rear bumper, whereas you, on the front, you really don't have a bumper. You just have a grill. So there is at least a bumper on the back. It's small, but it's there. And you have dual exhaust tips that are functional, which I think is kind of nice. So the rear treatment is pretty similar to what we had on our 2017. There are a few differences. You can open the tailgate using the little switch underneath here. Or for 2020, as a standard feature, you can kick your leg under there and it opens the gate. That's a new feature for 2020 on ours. 
Now, once we open the tailgate, you've got some other buttons here where if you're raising the door in your garage and you're afraid it's gonna hit, you can always stop the door by pressing one of these buttons and it will stop in place. And it will also remember the location that you stopped in so that the next time it will only open that high. So you can program it uh, to stop where you want it to. You don't have a lot of storage space in the NX in the back if the rear seats are up. If they're folded down, it's not too bad, but the rear seats up, you can see, and then we have a cargo net here, which did come as a standard equipment. Uh, you've got a little bit of space back there, and I will put on the screen how many square feet uh, that you actually have of storage space and you have this little kind of a package tray that when you lower the tailgate, it kind of flips down so that hides whatever you've got stored in the back of the car so nobody can see it if they walk by the car. Now the cargo area is carpeted, nicely carpeted. And one thing I do notice missing, at least on the side, is there's no longer an emergency kit. There was an emergency kit included on the 2017 but there is kind of a hidden compartment underneath uh, the carpet. Oh, there it is. Little first aid kit. They've just put it underneath here. This is where I usually store uh, my uh, uh, owner's manual. And then you've also got some storage right above the uh, spare, which is not a full spare. No, it is not a full spare. It is one of those temporary use only uh, spare tires. But there is enough room in here for a little toolbox. You can put some other little tools in here if you need to. It's kind of a nice little storage, hidden storage area underneath the bottom of the cargo area. Now to close the hatch, uh, you can use your foot, you can kick it under the bumper, or you can simply press this button here and it will lower down automatically. And here you can see the rear view camera uh, that's located right underneath the rear logo in the back. And of course we have the LED tail lights. Well, the first thing you notice is you have these little hydraulic struts that hold the hood up, which is nice, rather than having the little thing you got to raise up and lock in place. So that's a quality feature. This engine compartment looks virtually identical to our 2017 uh, NX200T. We've got the battery. We've got this 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, which puts out, I believe it's 235 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. And it's got plenty of power for a vehicle this size. It really has plenty of get up and go to get on the freeway when you need to come up to speed pretty quick. So let's check out the interior of this 2020 Lexus NX 300T. So to start with, I wanna let you know I'm six foot two, about 185, and I can sit in here pretty comfortably I have plenty of headroom, even with a cap on. Uh, of course, the seats are adjustable. I've got plenty of uh, uh, leg room, headroom, no problem. I can fit in this car pretty comfortably. It's a little bit tight, tighter than our other Lexuses, but not bad. These are, we have the cream colored seats in our car. This is what uh, Lexus refers to as new Lux uh, trimmed seats. This is not leather and it's uh, something I'm a little disappointed in because I think in a premium brand like Lexus, you kind of expect a leather interior. And actually the two NXs that we've owned, uh, those are the only Lexus vehicles we've had that did not have leather interior. So that's a little disappointing. But the seats are nicely uh, upholstered. They're very comfortable. These are perforated seats because they are heated and cooled and you can see kind of how they're uh, stitched all the way up. Now, if we come up here to the dash, the dash also has this material on it, nice stitching. Uh, they've added some kind of a faux carbon fiber inset here, or insert, and then you've got some stitching up here on the dark side of the dash. If you look over at the door panels, uh, they have the exact same color carried over there, kind of a two-tone door color. We've got some pockets down here on the side where you can fit your COVID mask and even a water bottle and of course your speaker. So here we have the eight inch color multi-information display. We just have it showing the radio and the air conditioning right now, but you can program this to show different information. 
And then here we've got the two uh, air vents. We've got dual zone climate. Uh, you can adjust these using these little metallic switches, these little rocker switches. It's a very nice feel to them. You've got the fan speed. We've got whether you want the air coming up or down on the floor. And you also have very nice little buttons for all of the air conditioner controls, including automatic. You can have it automatically set to whatever temperature you have here. This is really cool. These are heated and cooled seats, both left and right, or driver and passenger. And you can basically just set the fan speed there. Here we've got, I don't know what this is, it's kind of a useless shelf that Lexus puts in here. There's really not enough room to put much there other than maybe a pack of gum. And then below that you've got a CD player. I don't know, what is this, 1990? I don't know who is using CDs anymore. Uh, if it were up to me, I would just as soon Lexus get rid of the CD player and turn this into a wireless charging station for your cell phone. So here we have the uh, power mode select switch, which you can turn left or right for eco mode. Uh, you can push it for normal or you can use sport mode. If you have a uh, F-Sport model, you get a Sport Plus mode. We don't have the F-Sport. Here we have traction control on or off. We have a parking brake, auto hold, and of course our electric parking brake. And when we get down here, this is kind of the nemesis of the Lexus uh, NX. On this year model, it has this track pad which lets you control the multifunction display. Nobody likes the trackpad. It also can be a little cumbersome to use, and I've just never heard great things about it, but that's what we have. We have this little compartment here, and on the back side there is a mirror, so you can uh, admire yourself or your wife or girlfriend can look at her makeup. And then there's a little compartment down here where you can store a few things. Now let's look at the console. Here we have a nice padded console. Uh, if we open it up, you'll notice it has a removable tray uh, where you can keep credit cards or coins, things like that. And if you get down in here, you'll see you've got two USB ports, an auxiliary port, and a 12-volt uh, power plug here. And again, this is a nicely, it's pretty good size, and it's got a nice uh, soft padded cover. Now over here, we've also got a glove box which is a pretty good sized glove box for a car this size. So this is normally where you store the owner's manual, but the owner's manual is pretty big, so I usually keep it in the back. But it's felt lined just like the uh, console is. Very nice. And of course, the standard two cup holders over here on the console. So if we take a look at the driver's side, this is kind of the business end of the car. I'm gonna straighten up the wheel here. Let's start over here with the door. We've got all our switches for all our windows. We've got our uh, window locks and things like that. But you'll notice something missing down here. And what's missing is the memory seat feature. This is the first Lexus I can remember owning that did not have memory seats. I'm a little disappointed. That's something that Lexus took away from us uh, over our 2017 uh, NX. And I'm really kind of surprised because there's a lot of new features and a new gadgets and things that uh, Lexus has added, but they took away the memory seat. So I'm a little bummed about that, but the door also has the pocket here for the COVID mask. Uh, you've got water bottle pocket down here. You'll notice these uh, door sills right here. You can't see it here, but these are illuminated door sills. That's a new feature on uh, over our 2017 model. Here we have the hood release. And if we come up a little bit higher, we've got our automatic high beam control. We have our blind spot monitoring control, and you can pop the rear hatch right here. And then up here a little bit higher, we've got controls to control the lighting on our dash, and we can reset our odometer trip meter. Now there's some knockouts down here, and these are if you have other features. So same over here, if you have an F Sport, you get a few other features down here that we don't have on this model. On the left side, we've got all of our light controls, our turn signals, obviously. On the right-hand side, all of our controls for your windshield wipers. It's a four-way adjustable steering wheel, so you can move it in or out, up or down. I've got it down as low as it'll go. 
So you'll notice here we do have paddle shifters on this steering wheel. That's something new for us. We didn't have that on the 2017. I thought they only came on the F Sport, but apparently they do come on this model as well. We have volume controls on the steering wheel. This is our hands-free phone call controls here. And then we have a jog dial that we can control our center display as well as down here we've got controls for lane departure assist and our adaptive cruise control. Now if we look at the dash you'll notice an analog tack and analog speedometer as well as temperature gauge and our fuel gauge. And I should point out that when you buy a new Lexus from Park Place Lexus you always go out with a full tank of gas. Now we've put a few miles on this so it's not completely full but it was when we left the dealership. Also, in the center, you have a digital display that can be cycled through a variety of screens, as you can do right here on the steering wheel. You can see various mileage, eco indicators. You can even now see the digital miles per hour. You'll see the outside temperature and the clock. There's actually two clocks. We have a digital clock here, and then we also have the analog clock over here on the dash, and both of these are set automatically. It's very nicely done the way they did it. Down here we've got our cruise control settings which is pretty standard stuff there. Now up top we've got the rear view mirror pretty standard but it does have a nice compass, a digital compass and it has three buttons for your home link garage door opener so you can control up to three garage doors with this system. And then up here on the ceiling you've got your uh, soft touch uh, lighting we also have an SOS button right here that goes to the Lexus Inform system that's spelled with an E. And basically you press that button and Lexus will contact, uh, contact you and find out what the nature of the emergency is. So if you have a flat tire, if you have an accident, or if you're a lady driving alone and somebody's following you, you can press that button at any time and Lexus can track exactly where you are by GPS and they can send help to you. Here we have the visors. Each visor has a light above that comes on when you open the mirror, the sliding mirror control, like that. So let's take a look at the back seat on this NX300T 2020 model. Now I'm six foot two, and you can see I've got pretty good headroom here. I'm okay, I'm not hitting anything. Um, this front seat is all the way back and I can still sit in here. Uh, my knees are touching the back of the seat, so it'd be more comfortable if uh, my passenger here would reduce some of the recline on the seat. But the back of the seats are nicely upholstered uh, in that leather-like material. We have nice large pockets. You can actually slip a laptop computer down there. We have air vents for the passengers in the back of the console. And we have the same leather-like, that uh, new Lux material on the rear seats that we had in the front seat. And these seats actually can be adjusted a little bit. You can recline them just a little. There's not much room, but you've got a little bit of recline. And we'll show you here in a second that they do fold forward for more cargo space. Also have a nice armrest. Very nicely padded. It's comfortable. And there is a cup holder right here. What you don't have is you don't have any USB ports for the passenger. So there's no USB ports here on the back of the console, none on the sides. Uh, pretty much that's it. We do have a dome light up here for the passengers. These seats have to be folded forward from the rear door. You cannot do it from inside the cargo area. Basically lift up this lever and the seats will just fold forward. Now I'm gonna lower this seat and you'll see the headrest hits the back of this front seat. That's something I think Lexus should resolve. This headrest should be able to fold down automatically. I'm not even sure if they can be removed. They might be able to. So what you have to do is you have to come over here, either get rid of the recline or move the seat up to get this back seat to fold forward. But once you have it folded down, and it doesn't lay completely flat, but it's pretty flat. You'll notice you have a lot of additional cargo space now, over 54 cubic feet as compared to 17.7 cubic feet uh, without the seats folded down. So it does help a lot. So that's my quick walk around of our 2020 NX300T 
from Lexus. I will tell you that we drove home yesterday from Park Place and both of us, Ricky and I both noticed this car felt a lot more refined. It felt more smoother, it felt quieter. That could be because of the tires, could be because this has brand new tires. They're also different tires because our other tires had 18,000 miles on them and they do tend to ride a little harsher with time. So we're not sure if that's the reason, but the, the car did feel a little bit more refined, a little smoother and quieter, more like what you would expect from a Lexus. I wanna thank you for joining me today. This is the first time I've done a car review. Please put your comments down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for joining me today on Cruise Man's Garage. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.